What's up, everyone? It's David Nazario here for the RDG Soul Speak podcast series, where we talk about community solutions, the peoples, and the whys. We are here with jo- Johanny Cepeda Freites for part two of our conversation. Welcome back, Johanny. Nice to be back. Thank you, Dave, for having me. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for being here. So, in part one, you spoke about the community work, the organizing that you did in New York. So, my question is, what made you want to do that here in, in Reading, PA, as well? So I have to say that my passion for community, empowerment, advocacy, and just just like I mentioned, building and bonding, like helping people just grow, I think is innate for me. So when I came to Reading, I couldn't just not be a part of the community in which I, I do businesses and which I reside in. Mm-hmm. I had to, I, you know, this is my life. And everything that I do every day, I, it, again, it's part of my life. It's, it, it's not even work. Mm-hmm. So it comes really natural to me. I love helping people. Because I believe that life is what you make it. Mm-hmm. And we as individuals, we as human beings are all, we complicate life so much. And it's really not that nece- it's not necessary. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think that's important to make your work a part of your life, right? Cause Very I, important. Because I, th- I think it, it's easier and it flows a lot easier when you're able to do that. Absolutely. I, everything I do is a part of me. It's, mm-hmm. it's me. I don't, I don't separate. You know, being a mom, a wife, a business owner, community activist, councilwoman, board member, like it, it, these are all elements that make me, it's, I carry it with me everywhere mm-hmm. that I go and I speak about all these things naturally because it's, yeah, it's my life. Right. And being a councilwoman, that's your most recent position. Yes. So that's new. That is new. Let's talk about that. So How has that been? It's been quite, quite uh the experience. Okay. What does that? What does that really? What mean? does that really mean? <laughs> okay. So first, I, you do know that I ran in 2015. Yes. So I was driven to run for city council because I believe that everyone, every community member, every key stakeholder needs to be part of the process and the decision making. So for too many years, while I've been reciting and doing business here in the city of Reading, I don't appreciate people making decisions without my input. They don't ask me whether it hurts or helps, and a lot of times it, it hurts more than it helps. What type of decisions are we talking um, about? Okay, so health permits, for example. I remember when I first started business, health permits were $160. Mm-hmm. Then one year, they went up to $270. Okay, wow. That's Without a big a, jump. That is a big jump, and there was no justification, no explanation. Not to mention that they were extremely late. I remember not ever getting my bill, and I had to go to City Hall to get my bill. Okay. And then when I see this outrageous amount, no one could really explain it to me. Then I had to go back to pay then i had to go back to pick it up like it was such a process and it's funny because on the bill it says 50 dollar processing fee i'm like shouldn't i get that back being that i kind of like <laughs> that should be a, a check for you <laughs> right you know but whatever that didn't happen obviously and then i remember that i got the permit sometime in october or november remember i had to do a job for a college so i needed the health permit so i paid for it and then you know come january so a few months later here i get another bill 270 that's due by the end of january so i'm like oh my gosh it's just overwhelming. Like, how do you not ask me? And I remember at that time, um, bodeguero owners, bodega owners, they were getting uh, $500 fees, or, okay. you know, for these permits. You know, it, it was just a shocker. And I said, you know, this, this, can't, this is a very small city. Mm-hmm. There has to be an, a better way of city government communicating with its constituents. And especially right. businesses who are, like, putting in time, money, effort. Like, we're part of the, the economy. We're contributing to An the economy part, at a yes. great deal. I mean, mm-hmm. you have a lot of biz- big businesses that have left, and you still have a lot of us small mom and pop shops that are, pro- you know, that are keeping the city steady mm-hmm. as far as the economy goes and community as well, because we are employing a lot of um, our right. community members. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just one of many. I mean, there's just other where, as it relates to maybe parking fines and how you get a ticket for thirty-five dollars if you don't pay it in ten days. I think it jumps to ninety. Whereas if you get a ticket for sixty-five dollars in ten days, it jumps to eighty-five. Mm, right? Doesn't make sense, right? So just just some of those things that I I don't know, you know, that people give a lot of thought into how it impacts their community really. Okay. So so in that made you want to run in 2015. I ran in 2015, and okay. I was short 75 votes. Okay. Um, I also so then, I, I, I that whole process, that experience, kind of left a bitter taste in my mouth, and I said, oh, I'm not doing this anymore. But mm-hmm. then, unfortunately, there, there there was a loss on city council recently. You know, a tragic mm-hmm. loss. John Stefko mm-hmm. passed away. May his soul rest, rest in, in peace. peace. To him. Yep. And so an opportunity presented itself, and I kid you not, I wasn't really going to. 
I, I was conflicted, and, and, you know, I tell you I pray. So I almost feel like God put it in my heart and said, okay, you need to go finish what you started. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's when God wants, it's not when I want, right? So right. I said, you know what, okay, fine. I'll go hand Find it in. God. Find <laughs> God, sure, I'll do this, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yes, I think, not to cut you off, but right. I think that's a good point, is sometimes we get so busy, and especially those of us who are doing a lot of things in the community, and sometimes we jump at opportunities, and we do this, and we do that, and we forget to check in with God, with our spirit, right. with our right. whatever whatever source that right. we we go to and i think that's important that's what i'm trying to do more of right. and be more a little pickier about where i spend my time and how i spend it and do it not based off my needs but what the collective needs right. so i just wanted to make that point. right no and thank you for that and, and you know and that's where i was at i said okay fine i felt it i said you know what do i have to lose i'll just apply and let's see what happens let it be god's will yes. at the end of the day god knows my heart i think the community knows my heart mm-hmm. because i think you know I, i'm not that I think I know I'm very genuine and sometimes I'm too giving I have a big heart and sometimes you know unfortunately I get kind of screwed in the process but it's okay at the end of the day I'm like God you know my heart and you know my intentions and this is what I'm gonna do and let it let it be right and I was gonna ask you about that but for the sake of time I Mm -hmm. I don't think I will because you were recently in the news Yes. Do you want to talk about that at all? Uh, gosh, I've been in the news quite a few times, so if you want to be more specific with what you're referring to. (laughs) hmm. Water. (laughs) Okay. So, you know, when when you're doing God's work, the Mm -hmm. devil attacks. And that's how I view that experience. Um, You know, so after I was interviewed and all candidates were properly vetted by the city solicitor, and it's on tape, it's a recording, prior to every candidate, there were five of us. Um, the solicitor confirmed that everyone met the residency requirement. Okay. Um, so then the day that I was going to get sworn in, um, this this residency thing came again. Okay. Right, and it came from the mayor's office, um, mm-hmm. and he was asking, I guess, at the body inquire about my water usage. Okay. Because my water use usage implies that no one's lived in the household, mm-hmm. according to what they were saying. Right. In any case, you know, um, w- I have the water bill. We pay the water bill every month. Right. Um, Let me just skip right to the solutions. Okay. How do we how do we combat something like that? Is there a way to combat something like that so that water usage is not a thing in the news? And we c- because we obviously have other things that we need to talk <coughs> about. So so I think how do we combat that? I think that um, we really have to educate our community of why it is important for community to be engaged. Okay. In all uh, um. In all aspects of, of government and city government, local government especially, people mm-hmm. need to, to use uh, their power to vote. People need to really be educated on the individuals who are running so that they that their agendas are in the right place, that the agenda is about serving the greater good versus serving themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that you know conversations and people talking about issues is what needs to happen versus people going around your back and trying to defame yeah. your character Especially or trying to discredit you. Right. I think school. that that's, you know, but at the end of the day, it makes that individual look bad, right? Because I am who I am. I'm always going to be who I am. And maybe that's the problem. People mm. can't can accept how honest and blunt I am. Okay. And that's okay. That's your issue, not mine. But I need to do what's right, what's mm-hmm. fair. And I've always been very honest. And, mm-hmm. I, and I don't sugarcoat a lot. And, and sometimes it's hard for me to have a filter. Mm-hmm. But if something's on my mind, I need to ask. And I'm, I'm diplomatic. I'm kind. I'm yes, sweet. Very respectful. Very respectful. I always tell my students at the high school, you can say anything that you want to say as mm-hmm. long as you say it with respect. Correct. Correct. And I think that maybe, you know, I, I don't know, maybe I'm doing what's not the norm. And, okay. and that's okay. So <laughs> my next question is, how do you how do you fight the good fight? How do you stay positive? How do you continue to, to be in these type of interactions with respect, compassion, love, when you're being kind of hit with these different things, the different um, uh, fees that you have to pay as a business owner, mm-hmm. uh, people putting your water usage on Facebook and right. newspaper articles? How do you continue to stay and fight the good fight? I pray. <laughs> and right. I thank Keeps God. I prayer. thank God every day for the blessings. And you know, Dave, one of the things that I pr- I don't entertain anything that's really negative, mm-hmm. and especially if if it's not true. Gotcha. There's no. I'm not putting my energy in that because there's so much more. I, I got a lot of work to do. I might have a, a full plate. Yes. So if I start entertaining the hate, the 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 negativity, I won't get any work done. Word. Right. And I think that's also uh, people need to be very aware that sometimes that happens to create a distraction so that you don't get work done. 
Okay. So I try to stay very focused. It goes back to goal setting there and being go. organized and time management. Yes. And like you said before, you have to be selective with your time mm-hmm. and where you spend your time and your energy. Right. So my objective with city council is to really educate, empower, and engage our community. I need everyone to awesome. be at One the more table. Time. Educate. Educate, empower, engage the community. And what I do, my solution, I try to use social media. So I will post agendas, mm-hmm. minutes if I have to. I talk to people. I will, and some will tell you, I personally text people. Hey. Reminder, yes, you, committee of the whole, you've done that city to me council, before. here's the agenda. Be part because I was appointed and now I am running to be elected, God willing, right. again. And it's to be the voice for those people that feel like they don't have one. All right, so we're going to get ready to wrap up. But as we're talking about elections, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on the current election, the mayoral? <laughs> run campaigning um, that's going on it's tough. in the city. It's tough. We were both at the forum last yes, week. Yes, we were both at the forum and I was slightly disappointed to be quite honest. But you know, I still stay hopeful and positive, purposeful and prayerful above all things. Um, people, again, you have to educate yourself. You have to study each candidate, look at their background, their skill sets, their experiences, their resume. What have they done? Mm-hmm. Right? Not what do they promise to do, but what have they done and what are they currently doing? Mm-hmm. Right? right? We have to hold people accountable. And if we want to move our city forward, we have to learn to work together, communicate, sit at the table. I may not have to like you, but I have to be able to work with you. Mm-hmm. Because it is, it's not about David, it's not about Johanny, it's about everyone. Right. So we right. all have to be part of this process. And, you know, when you asked me earlier about my city council experience, like, it's, it's scary because th- there, there are a lot of issues, mm-hmm. right? However, they can be fixed. They're, like, very simple issues. Right. But, again, because, you know, we tend to make things bigger than what they need to be <laughs> mm-hmm. or more difficult than what they need to be. You know, but I think, you know, people are driven by emotions, hostility, anger, mm-hmm. and we right. got to cut through that. We, we got to really, I feel like at City Hall there needs to be some type of team building experience. Mm, like let's shut down let's have a retreat i don't know let's go (laughs) climb trees and do obstacle challenges and courses i don't know but (laughs) we do some workshops some icebreakers we we need to do that i think people need to learn again what's their purpose there right so when you run for mayor and when is that something you're going to do um i've thought about it Um, (laughs) what the workshops or the running for no the running for mayor you know and again dave you know and i go back to this you know, people call me crazy. Uh-huh. But if it's God's will, then that's what I will do. Okay. Because, I, you know, I learned early on, w- being in business has taught me to really let go and let God. Because there's certain mm. things that are beyond your control. And you just got to really kind of like, ugh. You just got to say, here you go. I'm not saying sit back and do nothing. Right. You work and you do what you got to do. But I learned to just, hey, God, wherever you lead me, that's where I'm going to go. Right. And we'll end it right there. And it doesn't matter who you believe God to be. Mm -hmm. Listen to that higher source. That's what I'm taking from Mm -hmm. this is that we need to uh, stay prayed up. And that could mean prayer. That could mean meditation. That Mm -hmm. could mean running, jogging, drawing, coloring. Absolutely. Any of those are any types of prayer in my belief. Mm -hmm. So we need to pray. We need to be purposeful. We need to work together. And we need to. What am I missing? Be positive. Right. Positive, prayerful, purposeful. I like that. And All community, right. remember, we got to engage, educate, empower. Yes. and Collectively. If, if you need some community, stop by Mi Casa Su Casa, 320 Penn Street. That is the community hub as far as I'm concerned. Yes, sir. Thanks Thank for you. coming through. Thank you for having me, I David. had a ball. This is Johanny Cepeda Freites and David Nazario for the RDG Soul Speak podcast series. <laughs> <laughs>